Welcome to Making Bank. I am Josh Felber, where we uncover the mindset and the success strategies of the top 1% so you can amplify your life and your business today. I'm really excited for today's guest and honored to have Jordan Harbinger. Welcome to Making Bank. Thanks, man. Appreciate the opportunity. Cool. Yeah. I know there's maybe a half a percent of the population out there that doesn't know who you are That's fine. through your old podcast and everything else. Why don't you give them like a quick 10 second, 30 seconds, sure. whatever, let them know. Sure. So I spent 11 years hosting the Art of Charm podcast, have left that company, no longer host that show. Now I do the Jordan Harbinger show because I'm really creative with the titling <laughs> of my show. I actually just figured people were like, you need to name it a benefit. You need to do this. this right. And I was like, well, people might just be looking for me in general because I True. just ghosted the whole Art of Charm brand. So <laughs> that made it easier. So people can search for the Jordan Harbinger show and find us. But I spent nice. 11 years building one of the largest podcasts yeah. in, in podcast land with 4.1 million downloads every wow. month and just trying to rebuild the new show brick by brick. But now, instead of <clears throat> baking the bricks in a clay oven for 11 years, I know where all the bricks are and they're in a neat little pile in my backyard, so to speak, to take cool. the metaphor way too far. So <laughs> it's been a lot easier growing, even though the new show's only been up for not even a month. It's already a double-digit percentage of what took me years and years sure. and years. I mean, I think right now where the Jordan Harbinger show is is something like where the Art of Charm was after 6 or 7 years. Wow. Yeah. That's so it's incredible. Much faster. Yeah. Of course, markets now are different too. You For can sure. build a show. More places. Back then, back when I started it, you you go people go, "What do you do?" Well, I do a podcast and they go, "Oh, what's that?" <laughs> More than half the time. Right? So, do you know what a podcast is and they go, mm, I think I've heard of it." Now people go, yeah, obviously I know what a podcast is. And even even a 60-year-old person sure, would be like, yeah. yeah, of course I know what that is. I'm not that old. So the <laughs> nice. game has changed. Oh, know? yeah, for sure. Plus, it, many more mediums to get on and everything yeah. else, too, for sure. Yeah. So, well, no, that's that's awesome. Um, well, since you brought it up, I admit, let's maybe kind of start off a little bit and talk about you know the differences of what you're doing now today to sure. accelerate your show's growth, um, You know, which you didn't know back in the day. Yeah, man. Where do I even begin? First of all, you can easily, in fact, throw all the tactical stuff sure. off the table. Cool. Uh, really, what's been the biggest lever was relationships. And mm. I know that sounds maybe <clears throat> a little bit cliche, but I'll tell you what I mean. Okay. Back when I first started the show, I remember asking my own friends if they would be a guest on the show. And I remember getting texts back like, this, this is stupid. Nobody cares about your podcast. Or like, you know, lose my number. And I was like, my friends suck. <laughs> But also, they were right. I mean, who knew what this even was? Right. Nobody cared. There were less than a thousand podcasts in the iTunes store at this point, most of wow. which were not yeah. active because they had three episodes and nobody cared about it. <laughs> but now that I'm trying to rebuild, I'm calling people that I've met over the last 11 years, friendships sure. that I've maintained. People introduced me to you, for example, right. and they were like, oh, this would be really interesting for Making Bank. That took me years. You know, I would have to scrape for an intro for months and months and months and find somebody who can introduce me to, say, Ben Greenfield Fitness. Right. And now I could text Ben whenever I need something and he could do the same. That's and it's cool. just instant, yeah, I'll say it tomorrow and I'll do this. And Pat Flynn, I'll mail for this tomorrow, no problem. Mm, cool. That took years and years and years to build. Now that legwork is done because I have these relationships in place. So something that took six years to build before where it was how do I promote this what people listen right. to podcasts who can help me promote this now I can just make a spreadsheet of a hundred people and it's not people that I haven't talked to in three years it's people that I've regularly hung out with talked sure. to seen at events like this and I can ask them for a favor because they could always ask me for a favor and it builds back so much faster than I thought that's awesome so taking that premise and the networks and the relationships and everything that you've created there. Yeah. Say somebody brand new and they're doing something, they yeah. don't have that, but they they're don't. here now and today. Right. So what would you say, okay guys, this is kind of that first thing to create that connection or? Yeah, I've got a couple of principles that I've followed. Thankfully, I've followed them over the last 10 plus years. Cause right. They're really easy. It's really easy to write about networking when you're like, I'm on top of the podcast. Then it's easy, yeah. Yeah, I'll make a product about this. But I, sure. I actually really believe in these principles, and they've been really, really helpful cool. for me. Uh, and they'll be helpful for you, too. So the first one, you know Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, yes. where they say, ABC, oh, yeah. always be closing. So we do ABG, always be generous or always mm. be giving. And what that means is, aside from having an awesome ring to it, what that means is help other people without the expectation of anything in return. 
And I know that that sounds like very Dale Carnegie, Pollyanna, but the, the truth is it makes helping right. and networking with other people easier because sure. it reduces the cognitive load. Like if I'm thinking, hmm, what can I get from Josh right now? <laughs> uh, I don't really need anything, so I'm not going to interact with him or, right. I'm gonna, oh, I'm going to prioritize something else. That's bad because then anytime you interact with somebody, you're forced to think, what can I get from them? And that right. the answer usually is going to be nothing because you don't know what you need in five years. That's you only true. know what you need right now. <laughs> right. So you'll like, ignore all these great people. Right. You won't make as many friends. You won't make as many connections. And that's a problem. So reduce the cognitive load by just helping other people without cool. expectation of anything in return. And the other thing, the problem that you run into then is scalability. So right. if I'm a graphic designer and I'm only helping people with graphic design, I have a very limited pool of opportunities of people that I can help. Sure. But if I'm willing to connect them with other people in my network, then it's scalable. I can get, make 15 email introductions in a day. Right. I can't make 15 website designs or whatever in a day. Be, yeah. And so, and that would be free and I'd end up going broke and not being able to pay the bills, but I can send a hundred email intros in a day on a Saturday morning before lunch and you're never gonna have that many, in a, you, you won't have that many in a month, right. even if you're a really active yeah. networker. So what, what it does is it reduces the cognitive load and it makes it scalable okay. so that you can create relationships among two people. So if I introduce two other people in my network, they both kind of owe me one in their head, and I don't mean that in a keeping score kind right. of way. I'll get to that in a second. But I get to that meaning that they can then do their thing, and then in three years they might go, oh yeah, you introduced me to this CPA that I've been working mm -hmm. with, saved me a ton on taxes, sure. thanks for that. So I don't have to help people within my own realm of expertise. Right. So it Makes opens sense. up a ton more opportunity for me to help other people in a scalable way without the expectation of anything in return. So that's okay. sort of like the three-prong fork <laughs> of that one. <laughs> The last piece that I would say is really, really important is don't keep score. And what, is, keeping, yeah. what keeping score is, the ex <clears throat> that's the expectation of something in return, right. but this is, this is sort of even deeper than that because a lot of people create these covert contracts in their head. And okay. what, the reason it's a covert contract is because one party knows about it <laughs> and the other party has no idea right. that there's a, an agreement in place. And the classic example in interpersonal, it, I'll put a dating example on it because it's okay. more fun than a business example. <laughs> So you pick this gal up from the airport right. five times. You drive her to the airport five times. Maybe she's your neighbor or some friend you have. And then she's complaining about guys she's dating. And in your head, you're just thinking, one day she's going to realize <laughs> that, that I'm so nice and I'm always I'm there the for her. I'm yeah. the guy. And then, you know, nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens. And for months or years, you're pining, right? Because you've got the covert contract. Right. She's Eventually, she's going to owe you. Like and then <laughs> one day after three glasses of whiskey or six, or depending on your tolerance, <laughs> you're like, Angela, I love you, right? And she's like, what the hell, Josh? I thought we were friends, right? And, right. and then you ruin that whole thing. You've poisoned the well because you've got this covert contract. Sure. But the problem is it only poisons your side of the relationship until mm -hmm. you have have an emotional meltdown on right. the phone like that and it works the same in business you know uh, I introduce you to somebody and you introduce me to somebody great we have that sort of even exchange but what if you're well connected and I'm not sure so you introduce me to five people and right. I'm like oh here's a smoothie and then you're like this guy sucks right I hate Jordan he never <laughs> reciprocates it's, a right kind of smoothie. it depends on the smoothie fair <laughs> enough but it, but it becomes a cobra contract <clears throat> right. if if you're really thinking like come on man you're never holding mm. up your end of the bargain sure because there's no bargain. My bargain is I. you're helpful and I like that about you. And in your head, you're like, this a-hole never returns the favor. Yeah. And that's a really big problem because a lot of us do this subconsciously. We don't mm -hmm. even necessarily do it because we're selfish or because right. we're doing it on purpose. I might just be really helpful. I might be doing this thing in a scalable way. And then I might say, hey, can you mail out my ebook about um, stuffed ch chinchillas for decor decorative purposes, and you're like, it's not really a fit for my audience, I don't really know if I wanna do that, and then I'm angry about this because in my mind you owe me, right? Uh, sure, so yeah. this goes along with all of these sort of subconscious processes that happen with networking, and if you bring this to a conscious process, you start to say, you know, I'm helping without the expectation of anything in return, but I kind of have this little expectation built up, and you gotta stamp it out. Gotcha. Look, if someone's using you, and they're constantly, hey, can you introduce me to this person? Right. And then you're like, hey, can you um, can you let my cat out? I forgot. I locked her in the basement when I went to the store, and I'm not going to be back sure. for a day because I went to my in-laws. And I'm like, 
I don't know. I'd have to get up off my couch. Sorry, man. <laughs> you know, yeah. so something like really easy. Then you're like, this person's just not, they're not interested in helping me. They're very selfish. Sure. So you have to be careful, though, because it's better, in my opinion, caveat, it's better to help 100 people and have 90 of them never have the opportunity to help you back. Right. And some of them might use you, but 90, 90 won't, right? 90 might just not ever be able to help you because maybe... You're networking down, as we would say. So you're helping newbies maybe right. get off the ground. Sure. You're helping them with a show like this. You're helping them start their business, whatever. Maybe they're never really in a position to do much more than write you a nice review or right. comment on YouTube. So that's fine. But the 10 people out of that 100 who are able to help you, maybe you helped someone four years ago, and now they're enormous on Instagram. Sure. That is worth it. That oh, yeah. one yeah. person out of 10 is more than worth it because usually they are like, man, you help me huge. Right. Here's a giant favor that is so disproportionate compared to the email introduction <laughs> that you made for me 10 years ago. And I'm experiencing that right now with That's the launch cool. with the launch yeah. of the Jordan Harbinger <laughs> show from the ashes of uh, my career at the Art of Charm, to put it <laughs> way too dramatically. I'm starting the Jordan Harbinger show and people were going, you're going to find out who your friends are. And I was like, oh, this is going to be awkward. I'm not looking forward to this. <laughs> Because when you hear it from athletes and musicians, yeah. it's because they're alone, right? And right, all their yeah. friends left them because they're not rich or something. For me, it was the opposite. I just met you like a minutes ago oh, through yeah. an introduction because I think it was Jeremy Weiss and Jeremy John Weiss, yeah. were like, yeah. hey, our friend yep. really needs help getting the word out about the Jordan Harbinger show because he's got to rebuild his audience. And you were like, cool, man. Yeah. And those guys don't have to help me. Right. I've hung out with Jeremy Weiss a bunch, but yeah. he could have just been like, eh, you're dead to me, right? Like, you didn't have to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and all these people that I never have been in contact with, ever, mm -hmm. are like, oh, hey, I heard this thing happened. I know we don't know each other, but you want to come on my YouTube channel? I get 300,000 views. Right. Or something. And I'm, I'm just blown away by this. That's and cool. when I express my surprise, a lot of people go, well, you have been making deposits into the social capital bank account for 11 years with the show, with re recommending stuff, helping other people sure. via email. And I do that without the expectation of anything in return. But I never really thought I would need something in return. <laughs> and now that I do, I'm like, oh, my God, thankfully. For sure, yeah. I did that because I could have just as easily not have helped all these people without the expectation of anything in return, saved myself a lot of time. And been totally screwed right now. Right now, yeah, yeah. That's no, and I, you know, I think you're 100 percent right. I mean, I know. Same with, I mean, when I do my show, or I have people like, oh man, I saw you interviewed so and so. Is there any way you could connect me up with them? And I mean, I'll ping them, and like, long as they're totally cool with it, I mm -hmm. hook them up. And I mean, I don't worry about whether yeah. they can refer anybody to me or connect me to anybody. And, and and how much harder would it be if you were like, hmm, I could make this intro, but I got to think about who you could introduce me to. <laughs> And so please send me your entire list of content. I mean, how right. are you going to evaluate Well, I've this? had people like that. Really? Oh, I mean, just like, hey, I was like, hey, I know, you know, you connected with so-and-so. They're like, yeah, well, can you help me out with this? Oh, so You know, and it's like, I'm like, well, why didn't you ask me that before I even asked you that? Yeah, you know? it sucks. And it's like, so you, you find out, like yeah. you said. And you, you, you set just, up that quid pro quo. It's so I just kind of move on past it. Don't worry about it. It's, it's just. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. Right? Because <clears throat> even if I'm comfortable with that. Right. I don't want to have to owe you a result. Yeah, I don't want to be like, oh, because you said so. so right. Yeah. It's like <laughs> it's like if that's the relationship that we're going to have where it's like now I owe you something, that's it. One, it's, a, it's either a covert contract or an overt contract. <laughs> right. And two, it's like, really? You're not going to do me a favor unless I do you a favor first? So if yeah. I need something and I can't help you, you're not going to care at all. Right. Because that's the type of person who's going to be like, you're dead to me because – you don't have help. a platform or something anymore. Yeah. Or if they rung up a couple rungs on the ladder or they end up on the top of the total sure. in a few years, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, I don't need you anymore. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, go fly a kite. And I don't, I just don't want those people in my Why surround yourself with arena. Them? Yeah. There's too many people at conferences like this and in our circles where we don't have to put up with yeah. the quid pro quo crap that there's just no reason. It should, that type of behavior, in my opinion, should just not even be tolerated. So if you're the kind of person that sets up, quid pro quo or you're thinking well I'll help these guys if I can get something in return stop doing that you probably mean well you're probably just trying to hustle and grind it makes you look like an a-hole stop doing it <laughs> you heard it right here yeah <laughs> all right so <clears throat> I want to dive in a little bit you've interviewed some amazing people over your 11 year career yeah yeah what are some of the top things that you've been able to extract 
that you've applied in your life to help move yeah, forward? Yeah, some of the relationships. I know it's a huge question. Yeah, but. it is. Yeah, I've had like seven hundred. Inter- I should actually count because people go, "How many interviews have you had?" I'm like, "Well, if you subtract the fan mail Friday and you did, it, and I have no idea. It's like six. No idea. So the answer is, I'm not sure. Uh, a lot of what I learned about, about the relationship stuff, those principles right. that I just expressed, a lot of that came out of the shows and the interviews that I've okay. done. Sure. But a lot of that was sort of meta, where it was like, I didn't have Simon Sinek say. By the way, help other people without the expectation of anything in return. It was more like, hmm, if I keep helping all these other people, it keeps coming back to me and I don't even have to try. Sure. And sometimes I'm really way too busy. Oh, look, here's a scalable way to do it. So that was a lot of meta. But what I've really learned from a lot of these freakishly busy folks right. is the way that they manage their time. It, you, well, actually, you get a feel for a lot of people's personalities. So you'll get somebody on where you think, this person's so great. Right. And then you find out the way they manage their time and the way everything is conducted behind the scenes is a, is a hot mess. <laughs> and you go, oh, I never really want to do that. And then right. other people who you thought, oh, this person's like, no, nah, I'm not that excited about them. But offline, they're so pro and their assistant's awesome and mm-hmm. they show up on time and they're really giving. You think, I like this person a lot because they didn't have to do this for me. Mm-hmm. Those yeah. types of scenarios have been massive for me. So it's not just the one takeaway I got from somebody telling me something. Sure. It's seeing how big deals conduct themselves behind the scenes. Because I interviewed Mike Rowe, you know, from Dirty Jobs. Oh yeah, yeah. And he was like, he was sick and he was under the weather and he was super cool and his his people were super professional <laughs> and they called me and they're like, please don't use the video, Mike's under the weather. And I was like, oh shoot, I filmed the whole thing and I had a videographer and he was like, it's fine, you can use it. And I went, I'm not going to use it because you're just being really nice. Yeah. I want to listen to your people because they know they know yeah. better. Yeah. And they're like, no, Mike, you look like crap. Don't do it. <laughs> right? Um, but I was really impressed by how cool he was. It wasn't like on and camera yeah. and then like robo dead to me mode. I'm overusing that phrase. I'm aware of this. It, 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 <laughs> like offline. But other people that I've talked to who I thought would be really cool, and I won't mention their names, they just aren't. Right. And you go, oh, crap. This whole like fun, likable guy. It's just, that's your performance? Yeah. That sucks. I've had that, I know. It sucks so much. (laughs) So, it's been great to see, like, Russell Brand and Mike Rowe and Shaq be even cooler than they are in your mind, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's been so disappointing to see other people who are 10,000 rungs below them on the ladder be diva (laughs) a-holes. And I just go, me and my wife were like, okay, mentally note this, for like five, ten years, sure. When you've had it, and everybody's filming you, and you're just annoyed by it, and hopefully things are on the up and up, to just never be like that, because thirty seconds in an elevator snubbing someone, yeah, taints their impression of you for your entire life. Yep. And you never know where you're gonna run into that person again, man. I know. Because this world is so small. I. I it's funny. I literally just had something similar happen. Like somebody I've been trying to, get, you know, interview yeah. and interview and interview, and they've committed every single time, and four times have canceled. That sucks. And like, as you said, they're on lower, but and yeah. then people like Damon John or some of these, they always show up. Show they're up. here, yeah. never want, you know, never an issue. And it's, but it's, it is. It's you're like, what? But and nobody would ever think of it because the yeah. person's like fun in public and out there. Oh, he's so likable. Why would he do that? Yeah. <laughs> Four times. He's I don't a know, really good me. actor. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. we see a lot of this now, and we won't go too far down this rabbit hole. Right. We see a lot of this now with the whole Me Too thing, where you're like, oh, Louis C.K., he's so great. He did what in front of six women? How? Wait, hold on. You know, you just, and you go, oh, and you're just crushed. I know. Right? And then you're like, well, I'm not as crushed as your career, Louis C.K. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, tell me, so obviously when we got this all scheduled, yeah. your wife helped out a lot. A lot. So, how involved is she with the business? And Super involved. Cool. And I'll tell you, before she came on board, everybody, I know you work with your significant, do you work with your wife? We you do, work? yeah, so yeah, that's what I we started a skincare company, so okay. she runs the face of it, I handle the behind the scenes that's, digital stuff. That's what so, I thought, yeah. yeah. So before I brought my wife on, I don't know if people told you this, they're like, don't work with your wife, you're gonna <laughs> ruin your relationship. <laughs> You're going to hate each other. It's going to result in a divorce, and it's going to ruin your business. Right. This has been awesome. She's been working full-time with us for at least three, three and a half years. Awesome. Such a great decision. But I will say that probably there's some wisdom in not working with your significant (laughs) other because 
although it worked out for me and it was a matter of necessity because I had fired my assistant and I really needed some help and she turned out to be somebody who, go figure, actually cared about the business and actually cared about right, me. Right, yeah, who would have known. Right? Wasn't mailing it in like my other assistant was. Um, it worked out really yeah. well, but I also know tons of people who work with their significant other and it's a nuclear wasteland sure. of a relationship and everything and all their ish comes out in their business and then it all comes out in their marriage and they, they can never turn off the office because they live together. So I think, and I would love to hear actually your wisdom on this, even though you're interviewing me. I feel like setting boundaries of right. like, okay, stop checking your email. It's 11 p.m. We're watching a movie. Stop. <laughs> you know, yeah. stop interacting with people on social media. Turn your phone off. Setting boundaries and also making sure that you're not slave driving the other person. Right. Maybe she slave drives you. I don't know. <laughs> My wife works. Probably. For, probably. <laughs> no. <laughs> but like, you, you really do have to set those parameters. For sure. Or you can end up going... I don't have a life outside of my business because every time I'm not trying to work, I'm with my spouse and she's working. Right. And you just got to turn it off. You yeah. have to force it. Oh, you do. Yeah. Especially sure. if you have opposite schedules. Like Jen, my wife is more of a night owl. Uh, so she'll okay. be working at night and I'm just like, I can't even spell my own name right now. It's after 8 p.m. <laughs> so she'll I'm be... heading to bed. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So she'll be going full blast of right. emails and stuff. And I'm trying to go to sleep, but then in the morning I'm like, all right, let's do this. And she's like, F you. Party time, radio yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, she's like, no, coffee time. Yeah. Time for yoga. And you have to let people work on their own schedule if you're married to them. If they're in your office, you can sure. slave drive the crap out of them, do whatever you want. It's your management style, <laughs> right? But if you're married to them, you got to put up with a little bit of a, more of a flexible schedule or you're going to get strangled. No, I definitely and um, I'll touch base and I'll ask you kind of what yeah. couple principles or what kind of things that have helped you guys. Mm -hmm. I noticed for us, I mean, especially, I kind of resisted it for a little while, but it's been pretty two solid years now that just helping grow the business and, and it's been good. I mean, just being able to work together. It, it takes some time because you got to figure out, oh, well, you know, why are we butting heads on this thing when we're both kind of headed in the same direction, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, kind of once you start to figure some of those things out, you know, and kind of like her role is the face of the company, and mine is the digital marketing overseeing that because I know that area. Yeah. And once you kind of like, I, I don't want to talk about how the skincare hair is going to do this and how it's going to do that. That's where she's great at it, yeah. and let her do that and let me do that, and then we kind of come together to help move everybody towards the vision and stuff. Yeah, you know, and I think for me. In, in her, I, I, I'll try to speak for. Her. Yeah. But um, be careful. <laughs> we've integrated, I guess, our. So we got three kids, so we've integrated oh, everything. Wow. So instead of like, oh, well, let's try to balance the business and balance the family, because yeah. it's always going to be out of balance. Sure. Balance, and as we integrate, so like, um, you know, our kids, they have their own businesses. They're just making the skincare products <laughs> in the basement. <laughs> well, no, my dad. Can I have? Can I see the sun? The no, <laughs> you're locked in here. <laughs> Well, no, it's like our daughter created her own pet products, oh, natural cool. pet products, because she saw what the skincare stuff was doing, and it's like, oh, well, pet care's got to have the same thing. Wait, how old are your kids? You uh, my daughter's nine, okay. and my, I got twin boys that are seven. So your nine-year-old daughter has uh -huh. her own For the last year and a half, That's yeah. insane. That's you amazing. go right online to paleopets.com, boom, she's really? right there. Yeah. I feel like I've heard of that, actually. It's Probably. Crazy. She's got yeah. little ads out there. She does her wow. Facebook Lives. and That's you know, incredible. It's, so we've tried to integrate. They can do whatever they want, but they want to do what we're doing. Yeah. And so I think integration, um, but also having the time, spending the time. Um, yeah. She goes to bed earlier, like you. Yeah. I, I work late, so I get out, and from two to four hours, I can hammer out a ton of stuff and sure. get it done. And I'm not bogging anybody down, not yeah. feeling, oh, well, I need to go spend time with them or anything like that. Yeah. We already did all that. They're asleep so. also, probably. Well, everybody's asleep like, at that yeah, point perfect. by 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night. That's the best way to do it, man. So, but, I don't have kids yet, so I am curious <laughs> how I'm going to end up. I always joke, I'm like, how old is, or how young is too young to teach them how to edit audio? <laughs> yeah. yeah. When, as soon as they can move the mouse. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm like, my producer, Jason, I'm like, hey, man, uh, you mm -hmm. might have a few assistant producers coming into play pretty soon. He's yeah. like, oh, crap, who? And I'm like, I don't know. I got to have kids, and then when they're five or six, watch your back. They're going to be, you know, they're coming editing, to help. Yeah. They're going to be normalizing the audio levels. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So I guess we got a couple more minutes left, yeah. but. Um, what um, what have you guys maybe a couple things that found that have really worked for you to help bring it up to that next level? Yeah, so if, if working with my wife. Working with your wife, yeah. So I'm in a different situation than you because my wife sure. is is technically like my administrative sure. person or assistant. It's but, like flip flop. But as yeah. you know, she's gonna also tell me what to do when she needs me to right. do something. So 
she's really good about that, and we balance that role well. But it sounds like you're, I mean, you're partnered up with your wife. You have to, yeah. really. Yeah. I mean, that's the only way to get it done and, and, and I have think, fun. I think your way makes a little more sense because I sometimes, and we don't get in fights or conflicts about this per se, sure. but maybe that's just because she's nice, a nice person, my wife. I could tell her what to do, but that would also change the dynamic of our marriage mm-hmm. because I'm not telling right. her what to do inside of our marriage sure. all the time either. But So I assign her things, but I do have to lay off and go, well, if she's taking a nap or she prioritized something else, I'm not like, where's that LinkedIn brief, you know? <laughs> you, so you have to let it go a little bit. Right. But you also, if you're in an office environment, you can't really do that around other employees because then they're like, well, okay, wifey gets special treatment. Sure. This is kind of BS. Yeah. So she has to be at a partner level for that and, right. and also be treated as a partner, even if the task or, or role that she has sure. is something that you wouldn't necessarily hire a partner to do. To do, right. So she's just part of that. Right. Yeah. So you kind of have to have the elevation of like the respect level is like partner. Right. The, the duty level, responsibility <laughs> level is of partner doesn't really matter what the task is. Sure. Right? So it doesn't matter if they edit the audio or they're holding the camera. They have to be, if they're your spouse, they've got to be at that level. Right. Otherwise, you're going to end up with conflicts inside the relationship, which is obviously just going to burn down the whole thing. Oh, yeah. For sure. And we, that was subconscious at first for us. And I I realized it because when I was with The Art of Charm, the old company, before the Jordan Harbinger show, the other guys in the company who I was actually legally partners with, they were not super nice yeah. about that stuff okay. and that was there was friction there Some friction yeah and it was like crap is she the admin for the company or is she like mm-hmm. my admin right. so that caused a little bit of tension and so we really had to consciously go okay this is your actual <laughs> role right define and, it out and this is your actual boss sure and these guys can assign you things but they can't be jerks just because you're my wife right or something like yeah, that right okay so you got to be really careful with that if you have other people in play other partners in right. play if it's just you and your wife and some other help, it's probably going to be a million times easier. Yeah, I mean, we have 25 employees, so yeah. it's, it's you know, and she kind of handles all that. I handle that. Great. And, you know, I got a team that works, a small team that works on my side. You have a team of people that will tell you that you're right when she tells you that you're right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Got hey, Mike. It. It's a good way. It's a good way to be. <laughs> well, cool. You're right, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it was really awesome. Um, why don't you tell people where to find sure. you? Sure. Yeah. Um, so if you listen to podcasts, or if you don't, you should search for the Jordan Harbinger Show, or you can just go to jordanharbinger.com slash podcast and cool. you can find everything there. There's a, a handful, a couple handfuls of episodes up now of the new show, and each one solves a problem. Each one has worksheets because there's practical stuff to apply. And so if you like learning and you like practical stuff, that's what we do on the show. Nice. I made still those worksheets. Steal the worksheet idea. It's really good. I like that. Otherwise, you have to absorb everything. It just right. doesn't work that way. And you, they don't want to take notes all the time yeah. and everything else. So maybe steal the worksheet That's idea right. and give it to you guys. Um, no, it was an honor to have you on here. Likewise. Um, really appreciate your time today and taking a few minutes out to come on over here. So thanks Thank for coming you, on Making Bank. Appreciate yeah. it. I am Josh Felber. You were watching Making Bank. Get out and be extraordinary. <laughs>